proudly sponsored by Premier Guns. Hello, Bill. Hello, Alex. <laughs> Thanks for having me. My pleasure. You're very welcome. So, uh, we're waiting for the consultation. We are waiting for the consultation. It's, uh, it's a bit like the phony war, really. You know, we, we know that something's going to happen, but we don't quite know when. I'm hoping it's going to arrive in an envelope and we're going to open it imminently when a van comes down that driveway. I don't think it'll arrive in an envelope. It will arrive electronically on the basis that BASC is a stakeholder and the Home Office will send it direct. Damn it. That's my enveloping scene out the window. I fear, I fear, I fear. It. I don't think anybody uses envelopes anymore, do they? Uh, other other than to put the receipts for their expenses in. <laughs> yeah, that's a BASC thing, I think. <laughs> I don't have a receipt <laughs> envelope for my expenses. Game. What kind of questions do you think are going to be in it? The questions will have been dictated by, first of all, the Scottish Affairs Committee mm. into the murder on the Isle of Skye, which made all kinds of recommendations about uh, changes of firearms, which I find quite bizarre really, on the basis that the murder on the Isle of Skye was just a single incident domestic murder. And it it seems to stretch the boundaries of credibility that it was looked at by a government committee which tried to sort of extend it out to make it as broad a thing as we need to change the firearms laws. Mm. I, I didn't quite get get how that works. When do you think the police are going to take responsibility for their own negligence? I mean, you've only got to look at the Jake Davison thing. The, the way I see all this is it's a cover-up from the police who were absolutely inept. Yes, they took Jake Davison's firearms off him. Then they gave them back to him. I think it's interesting that um, there is this obfuscation that is going out. And I'll tell you another thing I find very interesting is that the... Chief Constable of Devon and Cornwall, who was in post when this terrible outrage happened, he was allowed to retire before the inquest, and uh, I say that doesn't sit, sit easily. No. Talk, uh, talking uh, of uh, retirement, uh, Bill, sorry to cut over you, is it true that the coroner who made these uh, recommendations, of which this consultation which we're waiting for will be, you know, is a result of that, is it true that they've now retired and it was their last case? Yeah, the, the, the coroner, senior coroner, Ian Arrow, he retired oh, within days of the inquest closing. Yeah. So I feel, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, that the shooting community is a victim of failings from what can only be described as the establishment. If you want to include the police as the establishment, would you agree with that? Yeah, in, 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 in simple terms... The inquest was very clear that the police had failed to implement any training for their firearms licensing personnel over, I think I said, 27 years that there had been these recommendations. Yeah. And there was the, the tired old chestnut trotted out that the department was under resource. I mean, that's... Do you think that the police failings in not processing their paperwork and one thing and another quickly enough is going to lead to an increase in people using firearms with an expired licence? A lot of the firearms officers at BASC report that people will say, well, my certificate's expired, but the firearms inquiry officer don't worry about it. Pro exactly. Providing you only use it in our area, you'll be all right. Mm. Well, I'm sorry, it's, it's not even a technical breach of the law. There's, I don't really think there's actually a, such a thing as a technical breach. It is a breach of the law. You either have a certificate which is valid or it isn't. So, let's apply this further. The police can't cope. They're overwhelmed. They're swamped. Why is it that, and I, and I would suggest that on this consultation, one of the things will be the merging of the Section 1 and the Section 2, making a shotgun certificate the same as a firearms certificate. They're not saying they're getting rid of the shotgun certificate, they're going to say they're aligning the process, but basically they're going to get rid of the shotgun certificate and they're going to replace it with a firearms certificate. The, the criteria will be almost exactly the same. I'm predicting. We'll see when the consultation arrives, if it mentions that. But... Do you not think that by doing that, or by adding an extra reference, 
which is another thing that they can do. So you've got two references on a shotgun firearm certificate. They're actually creating more work. So how can the police realistically, if they cannot cope with the workload that they've got now, be expected to cope with that? Why are they giving themselves more work? Surely they need to I, I do think it's, 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 it's a very good point that if you transpose the requirements that you have for, say, owning a tutu rifle to shotguns, then you would create this vast amount of extra work and the firearms licensing service just wouldn't even get anywhere near no. coping with it. No, no, no. The coroner used the words that he was seeking harmony between in the licensing system. And I wonder whether or not what he actually meant was that the tests for having a section one firearm and a section two shotgun certificate shouldn't be merged. Well that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Be because if if that was done and they're very very similar they're both of them they use quite a lot of of the same phrases if if that was done then they would be much less divergence between the the, the two systems and that again would reduce the bureaucracy the mm. th a thing that really does need looking at to reduce bureaucracy is to extend the certificate life BAC yeah. has been pressing for a 10-year certificate, well, since at least 2014. And well, this is what I was going to ask you, what, you, what you're doing about it, and you can come on to that in a second. I also think t auto telephone renewals should be a thing. Risk assessed renewals. Yeah. Again, the statutory guidance says it may be appropriate to do that. And so basically, I, the police just need to follow the statutory guidance? Yes. Because what I'm noticing is nobody is saying, which I'm prepared to say now, that this is the fault of the police, that this is a cover-up of their own inadequacies, that they're backpedalling like crazy, and if they'd have been better in their checks, certainly in the case of the Jake Davidson thing, plus others, this wouldn't have happened. Yeah, well, and we... even now, they're incompetent in what they're doing. They're not fit for purpose. The firearms licensing thing across the multiple police forces isn't fit for purpose. Nobody's calling for an independent thing. Nobody's... Well, but, 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 BASC has been calling for an independent regulator, like Forensic Science has, uh, an independent regulator with teeth to force change. And the way we see something like this working is that... You leave licensing with chief constables, but after probably an annual inspection, there is some deficiency found, then there is a notice issued that says, this is what you're not doing properly, this is what needs to be done, this is when it needs to be done by, and you will do it. It's the fact that chief constables are allowed absolute latitude in the way they run firearms licensing that has caused this problem. And that's well and good. However, there have been recommendations before, like you say, for the past 27 years they've wanted training for FEOs. There have been recommendations that haven't been taken forward. Well, in, in, Again, that's the fault of the police. In 1992, there was a thing called uh, the Firearms Control Board, which was proposed. Yeah. And uh, that was... Uh, fairly well torpedoed by the police themselves because yeah. of course they've got a, a vested interest in it and they, they don't want to give up firearms licensing as it's seen as an implicit criticism of them mm. but then they don't resource it properly. No they don't resource it properly um, and it we, needs we, resourcing we, properly, it needs prioritising because people are dying due to the negligences of the police. It's no more dangerous a shotgun than a than a carving knife in the wrong hands. You know, it's a, it's a problem, the way that they're dealing with it. It's a problem in the way that it's being publicised and it's causing issues for shooters, left, right and centre. Oh, People's God, livelihood. Yeah. People, and I'm not just talking about the trade here, I'm talking about pest control, anything. It's killing it as a sport. It's killing it as an occupation. And it's killing the industry, which is on its knees with lead, with with everything else. It's too much. It's like motorists are being constantly snipped away at, snipped away at, snipped away at. 
And yet, this is the fault of the police, isn't it? It's, it's, it's certainly the police have a lot to answer for on the basis that there is this complete lack of incon- of consistency mm. in the way in, in which firearms licensing is undertaken. It has been that since I came here 32 years ago. You know, it was nothing new. But th- there is a truism that says the police will never change voluntarily and they have to have change imposed upon them. Until you get a government that has the political willpower to take on the police and impose some sort of regulatory mechanism on firearms licensing and indeed on any other police function. We know that there is a mandatory regulator for for forensic sciences, so why not for firearms licensing? Well, do you think that there's a danger that if they did an independent regulator and say they accredited them, say they did an accreditation scheme, if they don't meet the practices that that part would be closed down? And where would that leave license holders in a certain area? For example, Devon and Cornwall. You imagine there was an accredited scheme, Devon and Cornwall didn't meet the thing. Would they then take away the licensing thing from the Devon and Cornwall police? You would have to have some mechanism whereby perhaps another constabulary came in to do it until they got themselves sorted out. I don't know the detail. Okay. This is, this is a conceptual idea yeah. that requires chief officers to do things which they're not required to do at the moment and which has always been the problem with firearms licensing that's why we need a blanket approach just to reset this really there is a huge issue it was six months then it's then it's a year then it's 18 months i think i think what 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 has happened there's been a perfect storm of events you've got a ramshackle system that was absolutely destroyed by covid it's starting to come out of COVID. It started to come out of COVID, and then the Plymouth shootings happened, which then pushes every police licensing department into huge risk aversion. It's, you know, it's understandable. You know, pe- people people behave like that mm. when you, when you get you get something like that. Yeah, yeah, of course. And until there is some form of regulation that has teeth you will always have this thing which is a postcode lottery do you think we should choose the best performing police force and run something from there i don't know how you'd organize it um i would need to have a a think about that i think half the problem is that without either a really seriously regionalized police force that puts all its resources into a into a region and, and we know a lot of the existing alliances for instance um, Norfolk and Suffolk they're very successful they work yeah. that is one way of doing it or you would you would need to have as I, I keep saying a firearms licensing regulator mm. and that firearms licensing regulator would have to have teeth to compel yeah, I mean, that's the, the main thing is people need their licences so that more people can go out shooting. Mm. That's yeah. what I want to see. Yeah, well, that's in the consultation. I mean, there, there are people who need firearms for work, but but also <laughs> shooting is a recognised sporting activity. It's an Olympic sport. Yeah, it's an it's Olympic sport. It's no different from people being able to uh, go and play tennis or golf or something like that. Exactly. It's um Okay. Well yeah. thanks for having me. We'll have a think about what we can do. We'll wait for the consultation. Hopefully it'll come today or tomorrow. Well all I would say is don't hold your breath. Uh, no, my <laughs> breath is held. My breath is held. Don't hold your breath. Right, uh, all right. Thank you. We'll see what happens. With Alex Sayer.